Hi guys! So welcome to the second Solo Charleston lesson of the semester. I'm so excited um, to get started. So, so we're going to be learning some stationary moves um, that could be described as accents. Um, they are derived from tap dance moves, but I promise they are not, they're not difficult at all. Um, and they can help add a little, a little flavor to your dancing, a little style. Um, obviously, like Silly Charleston, it's going to look different on everybody. Um, everybody has their own unique kind of like flavor. That's the whole point. It's solo dancing um, and everybody's different. So hopefully some of you guys who are watching um, will see this and these steps um, can help build your personal repertoire. Maybe you'll like them, maybe you won't. And yeah, once again, these are all moves that are not big moves on their own, but they're very fun to add in at the end of a count after you've done a bigger move um, as a little like fun moment. Um, last week, Isabel um, taught you guys some super cool moves, um, the 40s Charleston Basic, some moves derived from Shim Sham, um, so these moves can complement them, um, but they are definitely a different kind of move. So, uh, yeah, we'll just get right into it and start learning some moves. Okay, so before we begin, it's important to think about the pattern that you're going to how we count the Charleston. So Charleston is counted one and two and three and four and one and two like that. Um, and it's important to note that the kind of music that you're going to dance solo Charleston to is jazz music where syncopation is incredibly important. Um, so these accent moves you're definitely going to want to take advantage of that and you're going to want to perform them on your ands and not on your downbeats. So the first thing that we're going to go over is um, your step B, which is also called a plan in tap, but I think step B is an English easier way to understand it. Um, so when you do your step B, stepping with the ball of your foot and then you're dropping your hand. Step in. Alright? So that's the basic move and you can take your step heel and you can do different variations with it. So you can go step heel, step heel, step heel, step heel, or you can just, you know, do a big move and finish with step heel. Um, an accent, you know. So obviously speed it up like that. It's just a little accent. So, you know, you can make only do one of them if you want. So maybe you finish a big move, you're having a little fun, you know, you're just messing around. You step heel. And then take yourself into something else. It's not flashy for me at all, but it is a little accent and it can add another layer of dimension to your movement. The next move we're going to teach is kind of similar to the step heel, but it's a little more complex. It's called the cramp roll. It's used to tap a lot um, and is a four part move done in one count. So it is fast, but it looks really cool. And in Solo Charleston, it can be done as a downward which may sound a little confusing, but I can show you what that might look like, is step, step, heel, heel. So you're going to jump up, and you jump up, and you get up, step, step, heel, heel. All right, and it's a step with your right, step with your left, heel with your right, heel with your left. Like you're rolling through your feet, and that's where that downward 
So it's step, step, heel, heel. Again, step, step, heel, heel. All right, so once you've mastered that step, step, heel, heel motion, all together fast, you're good, that's gonna be like a white um, situation. So as you can see, when I go into my cramp roll, I don't just do the cramp roll from my hips. It's not, it's not this upwards normalic motion. You really want to put your whole body into it and just go down and flow with the movement. All right, so I'll go to the camera. It looks like this. So it's very fast when you get this one. And you don't have to swing your arms like this, by the way. I am just a tap dancer, and it's in my nature to do random things with my arms. But step, step. Um, so like I demonstrated in the beginning, you can use this cramp roll um, to transition um, out of one groove into another. Um, in my opinion, at least how I like to style my tap dancing, I feel like a lot of these tap moves um, go really well with a little clap clap or a little clap at the end of them. Um, as you can see my last time when I was doing my little Charleston thing, you know, so maybe I'm dancing around and I'm, I'm really vibing with this free Charleston, but I don't really feel like doing it anymore. Hmm, how could I stop doing my free Charleston? Maybe I is the heel stand. So the heel stand looks like this. So this move is really simple. Um, you are going to just stand up on your heels like this. And as you can see, it's very hard to balance on your heels. So this isn't a move that you're going to be hanging around in. Um, this is a move where you're going to want to go your heel and down. Um, it definitely helps if you stick your arm up. Um, so once again, it looks a little something like this. All right, so that's one way you can do it is if you hold up and down, you can also be dancing and do it all at once. So a situation and hop right into the next move. So we can do that. Um, you do the heel stand on one foot too if you're really feeling like it. So, so the next move I will only attempt one or two times. It is called the toe stand and it is very similar to the heel stand except you are going to be balancing on your toes. I'm going to advise that anybody who tries to do this be very careful and consider it. Um, our toes are not meant to support the full weight of our bodies for any period of time. So doing this move, like how I'm doing, without shoes, um, especially without shoes that get a lot of support, is incredibly, um, can be incredibly unsafe. So I will attempt it a few times to show you guys what it looks like, but the same idea with the toe stand is with the heel stand, you're going to use it in the same scenarios um, as an accent on, at the end of your set of counts, at the end of your eight or four if you're doing cut time. Um, so basically, your toe stand is going to look like this. When you do it, you want to be very careful. Um, to keep your knees very bent and to lift your hands up. All right, so the action of bringing your hands up and bending your knees is going to relieve a lot of weight from your toes because you're going to be sending your momentum up on the way up and releasing your weight into your knees on the way down. 
So we're trying to do everything we can to alleviate the pressure that is on our toes. Um, so it's just gonna look like this. Like that, all right? So very small, very cute, you know? You can also do um, single toe stance as well. Just look like one, two. I will not be doing that. I do not have the proper footwear to do that. Um, if you dance in Keds or Toms or Converse, actually Converse is fine, but if you dance in like Vans or Keds um, or Toms, I would not recommend doing toe stance in those shoes. If you dance in like Converse sneakers, boots, shoes that have more support, if you dance in, if you're a guy and you dance in um, your dress shoes, that's fine. Um, they will provide enough support um, to alleviate you. But yeah, stay safe. All right. The next accent move we are going to do is called the slide. Now the slide is definitely a move that is easier to do in tap shoes than street shoes on carpet, but it is a very fun little accent. And I think you guys already know what it's gonna look like. Um, so you're gonna be, oh, my goodness, okay. Um, sorry, the trash can just decided to close on its own. Anyway, <clears throat> I think you guys already know what it's gonna look like. Um, it is snark. All right, so very simple, very easy. From whatever moves, whatever footwork you are doing here, Whatever you want to do. All right, so from whatever you're doing here, you're going to step out, and as you shift your weight onto the foot you step out on, you are going to slide your back. And I like to end it with a slide because it's cute. But again, you're going to be vibing corner, if you want to slide right out, or so all together, you're going to be doing vibing, you're doing booty numbers, you're doing booty numbers, and you want to go slide, like that. So, once again, do it from some other move, do what I should be doing from last time, slide, so as you can see, it's just a step and a slide. Clap, clap. Or no clap, clap. You can do something else. Slide. And do something else. See? Accent wings. So fun. <laughs> so this move, I'm glad I turned the world up for it. Um, it is a jump from one foot onto another foot. And so it requires lots of muscle. I don't want you guys to hurt yourself, so make sure you are nice and stretched before you do this move. I would recommend that you use the quad stretches. Honestly, take a lunge. Do some lunging, you know, pull through your ankles, because you just don't want to hurt yourselves, obviously. Don't hurt yourself. Just do whatever stretching you need to. I promise you won't look dumb. Um, but anyway, this move is called the over the top, and it's called the over the top because what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick one leg out and you're going to jump from one leg over your other leg. Um, which sounds easy enough, but the trick is this leg cannot have weight in it the whole time. So you are quite literally jumping so it's going to look like this. <laughs> um, I'll do it one more time for posterity's sake, but as you can see, my one leg quite literally jumps over the other while this leg does not move. Like that. What you really want to think about when you do this move is you want to think about keeping this as still as possible. Obviously, that's not possible because it is attached to 
the leg that is leaping, but you want to give the illusion that it is not moving um, as much as you possibly can, which requires lots of practice and also control. Um, so a way you can practice doing this is keeping this leg on the floor with your foot pointed, Barbie style, and just practice going like this. That will help you find the action of, okay, this is what it feels like for my leg to jump over the other leg while this leg stays still. So now you're gonna point your foot like me, and this time you're gonna really, really bend that standing leg. Really think about lifting up. The more you think up, the more time you have in the air, the easier it's gonna be to get that leg over your other leg. All right? So, see? Like that. You should easily be able to jump yourself in the air and cover your one foot. Like so. So you're gonna point your foot, lift up the ground a little bit, bend that other leg, and really think about up and over. Super quick. only move I will be able to be teaching today that I will comfortably say is a move of its own um, and not just like an add-on to another move or a transition. This You have definitely have to prep this move and you definitely have to have a transition out of this move. Um, so this is a move, this is a standalone move <laughs> as opposed to all the other ones. So like making a trust routine, Obviously, the missing hand trust here is to an improv. Um, so, what it could look like could be this maybe you're doing kick, turn, kick, ball, turn, kick, ball, step, and then on to something else. So, like I said, the fun thing about this is you can literally do anything you want. There are no rules. If you're doing so with Charleston, can't remember any sort of terms you use, just do whatever you want. Just have fun. So that is the over the top. Um, again, I will reiterate, if you try this, please stay safe. Please start to beforehand. Please make sure you don't kick anybody or hit anybody. Um, yes. So now I'm going to demonstrate a little phrase using all of the material that I taught today um, and also some of the material that was taught last week so that you guys can review um, what you learned last week and also the new stuff that you learned today. Um, this combo is very quick, um, so if it's hard to follow along, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, but also um, even if um, you feel comfortable with trying it out, um, it's good to watch lots of different hands dancers and hopefully um, watching me um, will be a different perspective on the same dance. And... <laughs> So, yeah, you know, get out there. Um, hopefully, along with this video, um, we'll also link a small, like, solo Charleston playlist um, that I use when I jam um, that hopefully you guys will find helpful um, to inspire you guys to try some new things um, and play with your music. Um, but, yeah. 
Um, I hope this was informative. I hope this was fun. Um, yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me, Isabel, Mother Alex. We will be willing to answer your questions. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Um, we might even dance club. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day or night, um, and I will see you guys in a couple weeks for some more solo trusting fun. Um, but um, peace out and have a midterm season. Mwah.